G'day to all my friends and family and welcome to Jim's 5am Club. You'll never guess where I am today. Check it out. I'm on the cliff face here at Manly and as you can see there is a 360 degree view of ocean up and down the coast. You can see all the way up to Broken Bay and if I spin around you can see the sunrise it's not as spectacular as what it normally is because there's a bit of cloud cover this morning but still it's a beautiful winter's day the temperature is mild even though I'm wearing a beanie and a puffer jacket the temperature is quite mild and it's a great place to be Anyway, what I want to do today is take you through a book summary. And the book summary that I've selected for today is entitled, The Survival of the Friendliest. <laughs> the Survival of the Friendliest. And what could this book be all about? And it basically says, or the key point that the author's trying to make in this book, is that the reason why humans are so successful and are at the top of the, uh, the tree in terms of um, importance and being able to control and to shape their environment is, is because that we humans learned very, very early in the piece to cooperate, to instruct, to communicate and to work together to get an outcome that will benefit all of us as a whole rather than to be rather than being simply selfishly looking after our own needs it's a very very important point that we make this because we're in a year where we've been surrounded by many challenges caused by pandemics by floods by fires by by mice of all things but uh, the importance and the ability for people to work together to cooperate is the only thing that we have that can help us not only survive but to also thrive during these trying times so uh, the author in this book kicks off with a lovely quote where he reminds us of the importance of our sociability and we're wired, humans are wired and we love being social. I don't know about you, I was an only child growing up but I love, love, loved being with my parents, my uncles, my aunts, my grandparents my friends, you name it. The social aspect of my life is the thing that I look back on and I, uh, I cherish with great nostalgia. And, um, you know, with the years, we've got, I guess, other platforms where we can socialize. We've got social media where we can always stay in contact. Just earlier, I did a vlog my first vlog for the day where I went public and my auntie Frida, my mother's sister who lives in Greece, who's been in Greece for the past two years and is I guess certainly uh, to a certain extent trapped there at the moment because of COVID-19. She was able to uh, connect with me. She was able to watch the sunrise live as I was presenting it and I was able to chat to her and say hello to her. So there are, uh, there are advantages, I guess, with social media that we need to be able to use to our advantage. Now, we shouldn't be pooping on social media all the time and just pointing out the negatives. There are a lot of positives. And the fact that I can come to you with Jim's 5am Club each and every day and share a book summary or share an observation and take you 
on a journey to places that you may not have been to before in itself is another advantage of social media. Just so you know where I am, I'm up here at Manly, Manly Beach. Behind me, over, over there, is Shelley Beach, and across there is South Stain. I'm a member of the um, swim club there called Bold and Beautiful, and it's a 750 metre swim from that beach to the surf beach and another 750 metres back, so it's a 1.5 kilometre ocean swim, open ocean swim, and it's a marine sanctuary down there, and there are plenty of sharks, there are grey nurses, there are um, bronze whalers, there are all these different sharks there, up to three metres in length, but people swim with them all the time without fear, of being attacked without fear of being eaten and it's just the bronzed Aussie way of life. So uh, let me kick on now to the um, uh, quote that the author expresses in this book where he says that being social is considered to be an evolutionary trait that we've kept in order to survive. So let's think about it. Why is being social important for survival? Look at that uh, sheer drop there. It's probably a 200 meter drop down there onto the rocks. It's scary for those who are afraid, afraid of heights. But uh, why has being social been so important to our survival as human beings? And being able to cooperate. Um, the author says that uh, we, need, we developed and we needed these gifts, these cognitive abilities um, that br brought us together in a community so that we could, uh, so we could survive, so we could work together, so we could huddle together, so we could protect each other, so we could be on the lookout for each other. We all have personal thoughts. One of the beautiful things of our humanity is that we all have personal thoughts, but it's our ability, our cognitive abilities to be able to share these thoughts that have set us apart from the animal kingdom. So um, what's the benefit of sharing thoughts? What's the benefit of having thoughts and being able to see the same picture as the picture that somebody else is seeing? So what the author here goes on to say is that our survival chances skyrocketed when we learnt how to not only communicate, but to communicate well where we're, we're able to share our thoughts, share our, 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 our fears, share our observations, share our slither of reality with those around us. Because being able to communicate and to communicate well um, made, us, uh, made us dependent on each other, for each other's survival. And uh, we're able then to use that, to leverage that skill to, uh, as I said before, to stay alive and to not only stay alive, but to build on the skills that we have, on the knowledge that we've developed so that others can come and start from a different point. They could start from our shoulders so uh, it's all about this learning thing, our ability to learn, to communicate. So what, um, what the author goes on to say is that the people who are able to communicate the best, the leaders who were able to bring their communities together, were the ones who were able to then pass on those genes 
pass on those skills to future generations. Uh, because if you are surrounded by a pack of lions or a saber-toothed tiger or whatever, the ability for you to communicate to each other and to figure out what to do meant the difference between life or death. So the ones who communicated the best, of course, luck was part of it as well. But if you have luck and skill working in your favor, then the chances are that you're going to be around for a lot longer than the people who didn't have the luck and didn't have the skills. So that what they talk about here as well is uh, they've done experiments over in Germany where they um, domesticated foxes. And what they found was that, um, first of all, not all foxes can be domesticated, but there are some foxes that have the traits, that have the abilities to, I guess, become domesticated, I guess is, is, is what I'm trying to say. So you need to have the uh, propensity to achieve something in the first place. And that could be something which is genetic, something in your makeup. But what they said is that once they found foxes that were that way inclined, then the offspring of those foxes were also able to be domesticated and they were able to cooperate and work with the, their human handlers. And yet the other ones, which couldn't be domesticated, their offspring also had similar sort of issues. So what the author is suggesting here is that there are some genetic things that we have as animals and people have. I guess races have, communities have, cultures have, which are passed down not only in the environment and the culture, but are also something which is embedded genetically in those people. Um, I guess some experiments I guess that they've had over the times is when you have twins, identical twins, separated at birth and brought up in completely different environments, and yet they have the same sense of humour. They have the same sort of demeanour. You know, these sort of things are, are interesting at least. As I say, I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a beha behavioural scientist. I don't know all the theory behind it. But as I said, I'm an emissary and I'm just passing on what this author has written in their book. Could be bullshit. But at least it's something to think about. So uh, what the author here is basically saying is that in order to survive, we need to have some certain traits in the first place that we're able to leverage, to use and to make the most of. They say here that on the, with the foxes, for example, the foxes that were able to be domesticated, just like humans, were able to follow gestures. You could point, or you could do something with your hand, you could do a certain facial look. And for those who have got dogs, you know that dogs learn um, gestures, they can sense you, they can read you. But uh, the foxes that, uh, that had the ability to follow these gestures were able to pass it on to their offspring as well, believe it or not. So what this indicates, I guess, from the author, so what the author is trying to say here is that social, social ability, sociability, sorry, and communication skills have a genetic, a genetic link. So uh, very interesting indeed. There's one more formal point to come out of this book from this authorship where the author says that evolution has chosen kindness to prevail in our humanity because it leads to prosperity. 
It's the people who are generous. It's the societies who are generous. The societies who express kindness to their children, who express kindness to their elderly, who support one another, who cooperate with one another. They are the societies, according to this author, that are the ones that prosper the most. Bear with me. So where is this leading us? It's leading us to the edge of the cliff. So let me just show you just behind me what I can see. As I say, it's a 200 meter sheer drop down there to the rocks. Let's hope that none of these rocks up here decide to uh, shake and find their way down there. But the author here is saying that um, about 50,000 years ago, we weren't the only humanoid species on the planet. This is interesting. About 50,000 years ago, we weren't the only humanoid species on the planet. There were at least, according to this author, five other humanoid species. But we won out, the Homo sapiens won out. And why did they win out? So the author here says that, just like the foxes, that our kindness, our genetic disposition, our ability to cooperate, to collaborate, to work together, was what set us apart and what ensured our survival and our ability to thrive as a species. And the other thing I learned from this book, which was interesting, I don't know how relevant it is to this talk, but they say that the human eye, the human eye is the only thing that has white around the pupil out of all the animals. And the reason why we have the white around the eye, around the pupil, is so that we can have eye contact with each other. So apparently this eye contact is something which is critical and important to our ability to connect and to socialize and to collaborate and to cooperate with each other. So there you go. I think I'll finish off now. So thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Jim's 5am Club, where we've just gone through another wonderful book summary. The book summary today is entitled Survival of the Friendliest by Vanessa Wood and Brian Hare. I didn't talk about the authorship before, but it's a dual authorship. And I want to finish off with a positive affirmation. I'm alive, I'm well, I feel absolutely great. To my friends and family, stay connected, stay relevant, stay reasonable. And most importantly, let's uh, continue to share and enjoy each other's company where we can go on a volta together, where we can learn different things to help us get, us, get, get through the day get through our lives, where we can be the wind beneath our wings, where we can live, learn and pass it on. And uh, make the most, excuse me, of the opportunities that we have available to us, whilst at the same time being able to see and learn about the beauty of this magnificent city of Sydney. As I said, with Jim's 5am club, my objective is to showcase and highlight the beauties of this wonderful place that we live in, the wonderful place that we have on our doorstep, and to overlay it with a message of empowerment where we can learn, where we can incorporate lessons from OPE, other people's experiences and pass it on to our friends, our family, whoever can benefit from it. Anyway, take care, yasas. 
I look forward to coming to you again from a different place with a different message, a message of empowerment, and uh, we'll chat again. Bye for now. Take care. Bye.